Hey guys, this is Survival Bob, and I got a quick update for you on the patch notes for No Man's Sky update Exomech. So if uh, if you don't like to read, let Bob do it for you. That's what this is. There's a lot of great videos out there. Uh, this is just going to be Bob reading the patch notes. So if you're down with that, stick around, and I will read them to you. The Minotaur added a new planetary exocraft, the Minotaur Heavy Exosuit Hybrid. Acquire the plans for the Minotaur Geobay at the construction research station aboard the Space Anomaly. The Minotaur allows exploration in even the most extreme environments with a unique hazard protection upgrade that keeps the pilot safe from environmental damage. That's pretty cool. Unfortunately, you're going to take some damage yourself, which we'll see in a second. The Minotaur comes with its own set of upgrades and technologies. Blueprints are available to purchase from Iteration Percy's on the Space Anomaly. Upgrade modules can be found at the Exocraft Technology Merchant at your local space station. Other specialist Minotaur abilities include the ability to upgrade its mining laser with terrain manipulation capabilities and the ability to collect or harvest rare planetary researches, resources such as the storm crystals without leaving the safety of the cabin. All right. Let's look at the next section. We've got the Exocraft hazard changes. Exocraft no longer grant immunitary to planetary hazards by default. External environmental conditions will now drain the player's hazard protection, though at a reduced rate from on planet. Uh, specialist technologies have been made available at, at Iteration Percy's on the space anomaly that allow Exocraft to be upgraded to prevent environmental damage. So now you got to pay for it. New Exocraft Technologies. Percy's now offers the Icarus fuel system as Exocraft upgrade that recharges the engine during daylight. The Exocraft scanner has been improved. Performing a standard scan will now reveal all nearby points of interest, i.e. all those that would be revealed by using the analysis visor so you don't have to get out anymore to scan. Added an orbital Exocraft materializer. This is a new freighter module that will allow all exocraft to be summoned while the freighter is in system. Guys, this one's sweet. So you got your freighter in system. You've got the module installed on the freighter. You can summon any exocraft in that system while, that your freighter is in. Pretty cool. All right, so we've got some exocraft quality of life and other fixes. We've added new decal options to Exocraft customization. Exocraft cockpits now match the customization of their exterior. That's pretty cool. Improve the light cast by the headlights of all Exocraft. Increase the base speed of the Roamer, Nomad, and Pilgrim Exocraft, which really needed it. Tweak the number of Exocraft cameras to improve visibility. Increase the speed and acceleration of the submarine and tweaked its camera positioning. Fix an issue that caused the Exocraft fuel efficiency stat not to increase fuel efficiency. Fix an issue that caused the Exocraft speedometer to flash during a storm. Fix an issue that prevented items in Exocraft inventory from being available for crafting. Added a coordinate readout to the Exocraft HUD data. Tweak some early game rewards to give players access to an Exocraft earlier in the playthrough of the Artemis story. Reduce the blueprint and construction cost of some Geobay blueprints. Improved the guide entry for Exocraft, including tweaking when it becomes unlocked and adding a mission to the guide page to walk players through the Exocraft unlocking and upgrading process. Fix an issue that caused the Exocraft mining laser to be ineffective when used on mineable objects. Fix an issue that caused Exocraft to turn invisible when saving and charting at a waypoint. Fix an issue that caused the object health indicator to either appear in the wrong position or not appear at all when mining objects in the Exocraft. Fix the soft lock that could occur when the inventory auto opens to the Exocraft page and no Exocraft is present in the system. Fix an issue that caused the position and icon of the network player marker to be wrong when the player is in an Exocraft. Fix an issue where Exocraft could sometimes fall through planetary terrain. That's not good. Fix an issue where the Exocraft customization camera could be incorrectly positioned when swapping between Exocraft types. Fix an issue when exiting an Exocraft could cause a fade to black transition if the ship camera was set to the first person. So, that's why I don't play in first person, kids. Graphical improvements and options. These are hard words, okay? GTAO improved performance by avoiding oversampling on distant objects. GTAO modified attenuation heuristic to avoid overdarkening of thin objects, particularly noticeable on grass. GTAO modified reprojection filter to improve AO temporal stability. This reduces flickering on moving objects, particularly noticeable on grass. 3D rendering resolution can be now scaled as a factor of the window resolution. This means UI can render at a higher resolution 
to the 3D game view, offering more options for improving performance while keeping UI crisp. Additionally, the in-game resolution may be scaled larger than the actual screen resolution, allowing for greater image quality than possible when rendering at the monitor's native resolution. All right, we've got base building quality of life, which I like. Added a new base part, the electrical cloaking unit. This can be placed to hide power lines when outside of the build mode. So this is pretty cool, guys. This is something we've been asking for for a long time. I actually played with this last night and I couldn't figure out how to make it work. So hopefully uh, it is working. Added the ability for console players not using VR to disable local base complexity limits. PC players could already adjust the base quality setting. This may come at performance cost when viewing large player made structures. Added a quick menu option to immediately return to the space anomaly when visiting a featured base. Fix an issue that caused incorrect planet information to be displayed when previewing bases in different galaxy. Fix an issue that could cause players to become stuck when warping to a featured base if the base computer had not loaded in time. Fixed a number of soft locks that could occur when interacting with base parts that were outside the local complexity limit. All right, let's get to the bug fixes. Fix an issue that prevented AI ships from ever landing on player-owned landing pads. That's pretty cool. I've wondered why they were always just circling my base. Fix an issue with the transition to New Galaxy that caused it to be entirely white. Fix an issue that prevented the Blaze Javelin from being cycled through when cooling down. Increase the distance at which damaged frigate icon are displayed on the ship HUD compass. Added a timeout sequence to the start of Nexus missions to discourage players from going AFK on board the Anomaly after readying up. Extend the time during which weekend missions are active to 9 a.m. GMT on Mondays. Added some additional graphic warnings when low on hazard protection or life support. That's helpful. Fix an issue that caused diplomatic frigates to award units as a substance rather than directly. Fix an issue with the trails on certain royal ships not lining up correctly with their engines. Fix a number of graphical glitches that could occur when warping in a starship. Fix a graphical issue that affected the bybeat envelope rendering on console. Improve the readability of the currency readout when browsing tech trees. Added a recovery fix for players who lost their void egg after they come back through the portal at the end of the final Starbirth quest. And actually, I just did this last week and uh, I checked it yesterday and I actually had a second void egg. Uh, I don't know what was up with that, but uh, I'm going to have to go back to the video and see. Fixed a rare crash in the lighting system. Fixed an issue that caused the audio environment to be set incorrectly while on Atlas stations. Fixed an issue where armored clams could be destroyed with the terrain manipulator. Fix an issue where weekend event missions could sometimes have partially encrypted descriptions at the Nexus and fix an issue where player models could sometimes inherit their scale from ships or exocraft. So guys, that is today's edition of Reading with Bob and uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys enjoy the ExoMac. It's got a lot of cool stuff and a lot of cool features. Again, there's a lot of great videos out here. This was just the patch notes for those non-readers out there. If you enjoyed this content, hit that like button. I'd love for you to subscribe to my channel if you enjoyed it and uh, check out my new series uh, on No Man's Sky. This is Survival Bob saying if you're going to be a Bob, have fun with it.